Hello, welcome back to Ben Sushi Life Noding. Um, in this episode, I'm gonna talk about like uh, widely about um, Blender, how to use Blender, perhaps for uh, to create um, augmented reality and interactive experience. So there are actually uh, a lot of tools and like uh, media nowadays uh, for you uh, to use to deliver your 3D experience. Um, for your users or target audience but yeah you can like using blender you can create animations and then render it out and then you upload it to youtube and you have your animations published and then everyone can watch it right away but as we already know that these days there are lots of other media like uh, let's say like um, you also have like a game environment so you can create game assets using blender and then you can then publish your game and then everyone can play uh, with your game. Uh, for me, I'm especially in interested with uh, augmented reality and uh, apart from augmented reality, I'm also inter interested with a uh, interactive experience. And to create interactivity is actually still these days kind of um, hard for like a, for normal artists. But uh, you have a lot of tools nowadays um, that can help you to do that. For example, you have this um, AR Studio by Facebook, um, and you can you can have a look at this one, and then you can create um, AR experience for fa uh, Facebook Messenger. So that's interesting. Uh, the one that I recommend also the Snapchat Lens Studio to create an AR. This is actually fairly fairly easy, and they have also really nice tutorials. I will probably make uh, video tutorials using uh, Snapchat Lens Studio at some point. If you just want to kind of display your 3D artworks interactively, you can use also uh, Sketchfab. This is one of the best um, to, to upload your 3D models and then give a little bit of interactivity. Um, highly recommend it and you can also view it as AR, AR and VR. Just the other day, I was actually looking at um, blend for web but uh, and try to install it but uh, unfortunately it, it's really hard to actually to get it working but i stumbled into vert 3d and then i was really surprised this is actually very very interesting um tools um so if if you actually use um if you notice here if you're using snapchat lens studio you are making um 3d experience for snapchat lens right um and if you are using AR Studio, you are making uh, contents for Facebook uh, Messenger. And if you are using um, Apple Xcode, you're going to be use, creating it for iOS. But if you are looking at something like um, Vert 3D, uh, this is completely different because uh, you can deliver the AR web uh, like a kind of like a 3D experience first, interactive 3D throughout the normal web browser and it should um, in theory works on any browsers on the desktop or on also on the mobile phones if the if it supports like uh, maybe I think Java script um, this is in particular I was interested into and then I will look I was looking at it I was installing it and then apparently it's actually <clears throat> rather simple uh, I highly recommend you, if you want to try this, you look at uh, Reming Remington Graphics uh, tutorials on Vert 3D. This is the one I was actually looking at yesterday. And follow the tutorials and then um, try to set up the Vert 3D if you want to get started on it. Uh, Vert 3D, of course, it's a, I, I wrote here, you need a license. And the license costs around Three hundred dollars. I think it's uh, much cheaper than Blend for Web. Blend for Web, I think it's about a thousand dollar. But this one is uh, have a, a much more affordable license if you want to use it in production. And for this one, there's one part that I was interested um, here. Actually, there's something called puzzles inside uh, Verts Three D that you can basically like uh, making um, like a block of codes um, similarly to programming language like uh, Scratch from MIT and it's really really simple I'll show you how it works basically 
but I highly recommend you to watch this tutorial first and because I'm gonna skip how you install it but basically the idea is that you you download Verse 3D package for Blender and then this package once you extract it uh, what I did is that uh, I save it into a folder I save it into my home folder and I call it uh, blender where is it blender add-ons I, I put it inside a folder called blender add-ons and then this is vert 3d package right all in the folder and then inside blender you go to preference and then you point your um, script into that directory uh, once you do that and then restart blender you, you're gonna find Vert 3d add-on here and then you, you need to enable that and you save the user settings once you have the Vert 3d uh, add-on installed there's uh, something magical is gonna happen you're gonna have another new engine inside your blender and this is where it start to get quite fun so if I switch to Vert 3d now now we are actually we're gonna have like a new interface that's gonna be dealing with a uh, interactive 3D web um, experience. Um, so this is the default Blender scene, right? And then there's uh, you might notice there's uh, these two new buttons. There's a sneak peek and app manager. The first one you want to try is uh, probably a sneak peek. If you click on it. It's gonna open browser and now you can see the 3d objects as an interactive web experience and this uh, actually it's not interactive yet but it's a uh, it is actually uh, you can orbit around you can zoom in zoom out and then you know you can you can pan around it so this is really cool really really cool I, I found it quite surprising is how easy it is and so of course being able to display 3D is uh, it's not a big deal yet, but you, you will see really quickly. Uh, let's say I have uh, this actually. Uh, so I make just four cubes, right? 3D box. Uh, maybe I change the light a little bit. So this one, let me make it like yellow and this one's kind of blue. And we need to have a camera. If you don't have camera, when you hit sneak peek it doesn't uh, it's not gonna work correctly so when you click the this button it's gonna give you a preview and with preview you don't you cannot do much except for seeing the this guy in 3d let's try again sneak peek once again it's being updated and now you can see this uh, four cubes as interactive 3d uh, web and this is really cool this is a uh, really something this is uh, now exported as GLTF this is something that will work um, on the web browser basically so it's really cool um, and I will sh I, I want to show you also that uh, at um, a bit later that you can use this um, programming visual programming language that's a uh, it's called puzzle this is really cool and I highly recommend you um, so basically Let's try actually using spare chalk on top of this. Um, I'll save it first of all. Just uh, save it on desktop for now. Quick Verge 3D. So I'm gonna delete all this cube. So let's say I'm creating a cylinder. So normally, right in a blender environment, you have a cylinder and you can change the radius, you can change the vertices. But once you're done and let's say you you're you're trying to see it as a using sneak peek. Okay, you have your cylinder. Now you go back to Blender. Um, maybe you hit a button and then you you lost that ability to edit uh, the 3D objects. That's one thing that uh, I can kind of get over by using nodes. That's why I'm using um, an add-on like Spare Chalk because I can always go back and then make edit and then 
you know, this is like, I think more powerful workflow. So let's say I'm creating a cylinder and I will be using bmesh viewer and then plug in all this mesh data. So now I have a 3D cylinder in the scene and I can change the radius, making it, turn it turning it into a cone, change the vertices, um, do any kind of edit, maybe even like add modifier, uh, wireframe modifier, for example. And so I have these objects. I can even add like, a, I guess, add solidify. So make it kind of 3D. So it's looking nice, right? I can save it. And now I, I can look at the preview. And currently the modifier doesn't seem to work, but uh, this objects is live. And this is something that I can still go back and edit. If I'm not, not wrong that uh, there is actually uh, an option here to bake modifier. So that that's, that's the one. Let me try again, sneak peek. Now the modifier works. Uh, basically it's being applied to the objects. So we have these 3D objects and um, there is something interesting here that you can also turn on like a wireframe if I'm not wrong. Visible edges enable outline, maybe that one. Oh, there is another one somewhere. This one, enable line rendering. I think this is uh, if I make it red and then look at sneak peek. Okay, it's not really working. Maybe I need to save it. Sneak peek. Nope. Okay, that's interesting. Maybe I need to also turn, turn it on somewhere. This one, maybe sneak peek okay that doesn't work doesn't matter but anyhow uh, we can change this I can change subdivision whatever and then I go back to sneak peek it will update so the, I, I really like this kind of interactions even like a uh, so we are currently like authoring um, this experience this is gonna be something that you can send to anyone and they can look at it in their web browser so that's cool and also when we go back to blender this is something that we can still interactively change. So that's uh, that's the thing that I like about this uh, workflow. So this one will bake the subdivision. So go back to this guy. Let's try and using um, a curve, for example. Um, in Spreadshop, we also have really cool uh, torus generator, torus knot. And this torus node, if you use a polyline viewer, will generate a curve. And we can close the curve and perhaps just add more variations to this guy. So we can animate it, etc. But that's for the future um, live noding. So with this guy, we can, oh, I guess. That's kind of nice. We can make it smooth. Turn on this spline. So that's a nice 3D objects, right? This one a single objects. There's actually sometimes you get like a multiple curve. Like here you can see this number. Currently we have only a single objects. If I turn this on, we get eight objects. So that's interesting. This is really interesting. Um, at any time in point, we can sneak peek and then we can see the result uh, as a like a 3D interactive uh, 3D objects here. Oh, it's actually resetting the the setup. Well, anyhow, let's go get back to what we have before. So torus node, and we have this design. Let's reduce the resolution for now. We can also add like a material, basic material, give it a bit of color, and then try again, sneak peek. There you go. I think this is really cool. And I'm this is like still the basic, but I, I'm I'm telling you this is a really powerful workflow. Uh, 
Okay, we have a couple of objects. Let's try giving a different color. So we can actually play with the material and things like that. So, so I'm gonna save this, save the blend and then sneak peek and wait a few seconds. It's gonna convert this curve and there you go. This is our web 3D experience. It's interactive and it's uh, running on the browser. Very cool, but uh, what, what else can we do next? We need more interactivity, right? What is the simplest interactivity? Is uh, to be able to click on the objects. So, for that, there is a um, instead of just a sneak peek and then looking looking at the result, just like uh, just like nothing else. There's this thing called App Manager. This and this is where it comes really powerful. It's gonna open some kind of App Manager, and this App Manager is running locally, and basically it's looking at a folder in your in your hard drive so it's looking at this uh, folder called applications and inside application you have a bunch of folder and these guys are basically equivalent to all this you see city e-learning uh, a bunch of things like ring etc this is all like example um, project that you can try you can open in blender so inside it, you can see all the, the media that's uh, kind of, you can have a look at it and look at, there's also like blend being supplied. This is my project um, that I tried the other day. I'm going to show you how you can create a project, create your own app. So let's try this real quick. Let's call it a sushi or whatever, call it a name. If you want a like, longer name. You can use underscore so this display name looks quite nice so let's try this so this is again from here i click on app manager it's gonna open this in browser and then you can create a new app basically this is gonna create a new project and then now you can return to the main screen now you can see there's a sushi app here and then on the folder on your hard drive you also see there's a sushi app with a uh, all this required media so there's a blend, etc., etc. Okay, so this is very useful. Highly recommend it. If you ever want to make a, a new first 3D app, you create project this way. It's, it's gonna use a puzzle, which is the visual programming environment that we can use uh, soon. So now let's open that blend on the project folder. So I'm gonna go to my home directory, go to Blender add-ons, Verts 3D application folder, and there's this uh, Sushi app here. So let's open this blend. So by default, you're just gonna get a basic default cube with a camera and this uh, two lamp. So this is the basic project file. You can easily uh, delete it and you can save it and you can work from here from now on and I can still use a uh, spare talk for this so let's see let's make something really quick um, let's make something a little bit more interesting icosphere and yet let's use a BMS viewer and so we have this guy let's reduce the subdivision and let's create simple extrusion extrude separate face i think this can be interesting let's try and scale it so now we have this um, esoteric looking objects that you can of course still go change the subdivisions you know do things like that and then it will it will update itself and if we check this app in here um so sushi app and then I think if I'm not wrong you can click on this one run applications and okay it's not updating right what's going on um, if I'm not wrong apparently I think it's a you might need to click on sneak peek and so have this you have this result okay that's cool and um, 
let's open the app manager again try this uh, sushi app so this one view scene with player okay still the box let's go back click here ah, still still the cube what's going on um, so apparently you need to do um, if I'm not wrong file export GLTF this is first 3d native uh, file objects and we save it into the folder and now if we go back to the app manager and then run the app hopefully we can see our objects there you go so that's our objects it doesn't have material it looks very gray so let's try give it a simple material for now and then for the light currently it's just white material if I'm not wrong give it let's give it a nice color yellow and bluish all right so we have 3d objects being created using sphere chalk and this guy is live we can change it and we can export it i think this is how we pl publish for now but there's a another way hopefully um go back to our app manager and run the app there you go that's our objects uh, cool so what next is uh, i want to try to add some kind of interactivity okay so i'm gonna try um make this turn it back to icosphere and then now i'm gonna extrude it so what's gonna happen is that this is gonna be our generator right but the the actual object is this guy and this guy what's what i will do next is to select this and select this and then tap spacebar and join it as shapes and now I will um, actually animate the shapes this is something that I want to transfer um, into the web browser so with this guy being selected I'm gonna um, actually make a keyframe here tap tap I and gonna go to frame 50 make change the value to 1 and then tap I so now I have an animation so we have a uh, simple animations on this timeline and let's see how this translate to vert 3d so save gltf export gltf and then click on app manager and run the app so now we can see this guy is animating and this guy is actually there seems to be they drop uh, yeah, they seem to drop but anyhow just focus on this guy right now maybe maybe I'll close it that's interesting that this one suddenly kind of fall like a physics um, let's save this as a new blend for now and then delete all this spread chalk thing delete everything and just have this guy that's animating so it's uh, simplified the whole thing save it export it as gltf and let's open our app manager and then click on our app okay now we have this so cool we have this guy but uh, again it still doesn't have in interactivity it's, it is animating it's really cool but we want to add some kind of interaction so how do we do that click on app manager once again and with our sushi app here we have this puzzle this puzzle is what's uh, interesting click on the puzzle and now you have a new environment where you can actually modify our uh, like your 3d work here and make it interactive currently it's animating and keep looping over and over again we don't want that we want to switch it off so with our objects there uh, we can actually turn off this animation turn off auto start it's by default it's gonna auto start uh, auto start and then keep repeating over and over we want to turn it off 
repeat uh, infinitely off and then we just want to turn on loop mode to once again I'm gonna save our blend and then again export it out as GLTF and let's go back to this guy I think at this point I think better close this and then reopen app manager and click on puzzles now we have our objects it's not animating right so this is what we want and we want to give a bit of interactivity here you have uh, the puzzles environment where you can visually add like block of uh, code and add uh, simple interactions but also you can make quite a uh, quite like a complex uh, interact interactivity even though this looks basic but it's actually quite powerful so let's try we want to when when we want to create some kind of event even like uh, when click when this object is being clicked try to do something uh, what's what's being clicked an object what we want to select our objects so apparently our object is called alpha so there's other objects like camera lamp whatever but with this event basically we want to click it we want to click these objects and do something and do something we want to actually play animation so that's uh, what we're gonna do let's gonna play animations um, our animation is this guy running from 1 to around 50 so we're gonna specify that play animation from 1 to 50 so what is the animations the animation is gonna be our object so this guy I'm not from okay oh I think that's wrong uh, play animation what animation this um, where is the enemies get animation of animation clip so this is what we want there they look very similar but we actually want to play animation of this object so with the selector there is a object selector and there's also this animation clip selector this is what we want so now it's a uh, I think this should work I'm gonna save this real quick and I'm gonna run it now the puzzles is running which basically it's almost like a blender game engine so this is should be interactive now if I click it's gonna animate and gonna stop I have a feeling that we can also do the reverse. so if I copy command command C command V so we have this guy we can actually animate it in reverse so if I save it now and play it's gonna animate and then when finished do play animation oh this one doesn't work that's interesting hmm well well it doesn't matter but uh, I just want to show you that and what's interesting let's let's make a couple here right so we're gonna have in our 3d view we have three objects three alpha objects alpha zero one two we have camera and lamp with this guy um, I'm gonna give a different color um, okay I need a different material apparently and so now we have three objects I'm gonna export as GLTF and I will I'm gonna go to, back to app manager but I'm gonna close this first so click on app manager and we have our sushi app let's click on the puzzle we're gonna now we're gonna work on this this guy now kind of animating and go back to the default so this one works really nicely for us the nice thing about this is that you can see we still have our code right this block of code we can copy 
copy and paste and paste it again and we can simply change this uh, this this objects and the animation so alpha 0 should work on alpha 0 alpha 1 should work on alpha 1 animations and because they are kind of identical we can reuse the animation so this should be alpha 1 this should be alpha 0 so this these are three codes um, puzzle codes that we can actually use very easily for these three objects let me double check again when click alpha 0 play animations from 1 to 50 and then reverse it back to original um, default mesh state so okay I think this is good and then we can save it and we can try running it maybe I need to also press F5 reset the whole thing now we have this interactivity so this guy kind of worked like that and back to normal this one not updating maybe there's a, a slight bug anyhow I'm gonna close that we have this guy right here I'm gonna click on app manager and let's check our app for the final look uh, click on puzzle so this guy click so we have that interaction this guy and then this guy oh this guy not uh, it's not reacting properly that's interesting maybe I made a mistake here nope let's try one more thing app manager sushi app and click and run our application so we have a full view click so it's interactive it's working ah now this guy works oh i know I have a feeling that uh, I might need to switch off the animation here per object basis so there is a there's another trigger somewhere that I forgot to turn off or something auto start oh it's already turned off loop mode once well I guess that doesn't matter this is just I want to give like a quick uh, preview of, what, of what's actually going on so again I'm gonna I'm gonna recap so we talk about vert 3d here um, and how we can use blender and also spare talk to turn uh, to make some kind of workflow that's kind of all streamlined and all always can be easily interactively updated um, puzzles in vert 3d is really powerful way for you to kind of visually code um, interactivity and uh, so yeah this is like a big I think a big area to study and but I I found this it's a uh, this is totally powerful and really like uh, something that you might be interested in to try um, of course I only look at this yesterday and then I'm extremely excited about this and I think this is really powerful workflow um, Currently, I think I found that this is the easiest way you can add interactivity, like a 3D interactive app that you can create and then you can actually publish on the web. Um, of course, um, one thing, first 3D, this is a first 3D trial. Do not use it in production. You cannot use it for commercial. You need um, a license that you can you can purchase from Soft 8 Soft. Um, but I think this is still fairly new, but a really, really exciting uh, way um, to create interactions. You can, if you are familiar with JavaScript, you can also use JS and then add um, like a more complex interactions. I'm still studying it, but I think this is really powerful. Um, I highly recommend you 
um, let's say imagine you, you can have like a like a character animations that you can control and maybe you can use like a shape keys blend shapes and you can have it working on the browser and it's gonna run on mobile device or any browser so that's I think really powerful uh, you are basically creating an app um, it's not like a it's not like just like a you render it out if it's if it's in blender you know a normal render blender environment you perhaps you you render it out as an image like that and then but this is static this is something static that you cannot give to your user but if you are using like a blender game engine or in this case we are using verse 3d suddenly this is like a, a blank canvas your user will be modifying this object themselves right and anytime in point you can you can change uh, you can change the color interactivity uh, interactively uh, your your user will be able to do that you can change the light etc and you can do that um, live so if I try now exporting this as GLTF and then reopen the app and check our run run our app you can see it should update this guy is now smaller and I have different color here and everything works in interactive fashion I can click on this guy this is really cool I tried if I think if uh, if I save it and test it on my smartphone this will also work as an app even though this is still kind of a basic example I found it very very useful and powerful so yeah have a look at this uh, you can get started I think this is a good page to get started on uh, verse 3d you can use blender or 3ds max download it look at this tutorial by um, Remington graphics and then there's another one this one I haven't I haven't checked um, let me refresh but I think this is a good uh, really good tool for you to get starting uh, to start with a to create a 3d interactive um, kind of contents uh, maybe eventually you will be using unity or unreal this is like another step and you you probably want to make like ios apps or android apps but these guys kind of like sitting in the middle this this is unusual um, and still kind of new um, I'm looking forward how this Verge 3D can evolve and maybe at some point we can easily also create um, AR augmented reality experience for it uh, using this but until then I think I, I'm gonna sit down and study this uh, maybe you want to try that as well, as well yourself and let's see how it goes and okay that's a long life noting hopefully you find it useful let me know what you think and I'll see you next time Bye.